Hi there, my name's Jane Anderson and this is the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. It's the podcast for experts who want to have greater impact, influence and income for their businesses and careers. As experts, we know that people buy from people and work with people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So I am so glad you're here because it's that time again now to really amplify how you show up in the world. Hi there, and welcome to the Jane Anderson Show this week. Um, Today's podcast is linking it to a corporation you and brand you and building yourself and your presence online. And uh, and one of the things I'm passionate about is is helping people to have their business under yourname.com. And today, what I'm going to be talking a bit about is LinkedIn. It's probably one of the things that I get the most questions on. And um, I don't know if you're on LinkedIn or maybe you're thinking about doing it, but it's, you know, it's such a beast, isn't it? And um, and so I'm really pleased to be able to to do the session today on or the podcast today about LinkedIn. So I guess one of the first questions that would trigger somebody to why should I bother going on LinkedIn? You know, I already have a Facebook page or, or I don't know that I really want to have any social media presence. And I think when it comes to your as a solopreneur and a micropreneur is that um, one of the hardest parts is getting started in your business so I think there are a few reasons why you would have a LinkedIn profile and I think the first one is is it's a great way to start your business because you can um, connect with people who you think could be interested in the type of work that you do Um, you can find the demographics of those people so um, whereas on Facebook you really you've got to do Facebook marketing to kind of choose some of those demographics whereas LinkedIn um, you can do that fairly cheaply much I think cheaper than Facebook unless you've got a business to consumer like if you're a personal trainer then you know Facebook's probably going to be better but if you're on LinkedIn um, some of the best things about it are that a is that you, it leverages a Google search. So if somebody's on Google trying to find somebody like you, when they do the search, uh, you turn up in those search results provided you do your search on engine optimization really well. Um, that's something I've got in the uh, my new online corporation new program that will start in uh, July. So, um, but uh, there's plenty of blogs you'll see on how to build a search engine optimized website, uh, LinkedIn profile. I've got them on my website as well. You can do a search on that. Um, so one is you can get found and you can easily beat some of your competitors mm-hmm. in a Google search for that reason. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of the other reasons that you would do it is that you can post on it. You can So you can put permanent posts, you can blog, um, which gets in front of your connections so that people don't have to go to your website and, and uh, you know, if you're counting on people setting up RSS feeds to your website, too many hurdles to get over to to be able to um, keep in touch with you. So um, the other reason is that you can make sure your thought leadership gets in front of them. The third reason is that they don't necessarily have to be subscribed to your newsletter and all that sort of stuff. So it keeps you in touch with the people that, you, uh, that are most likely to buy from you. And um, so... You know, at the moment, they're around, I think we're getting up around the 350 million people mark on LinkedIn. And uh, so I've been, I I was one of the first LinkedIn profile writers in Australia. In fact, I was probably, I think I was the first one because I couldn't find anybody else to write my client's profiles. So I was writing them at the time. I went and did all the, all the, Mm. uh, all the learning on how to build search engine optimized profiles tested and tried all the different methods that can get a profile to work and that's where the in the past that was for a job seeker but I did a lot of work in helping people move or transition out of jobs into having their own businesses and LinkedIn was one of the first ways that we could do that so um so I've been writing them now I don't write them as much anymore I I write the strategy but I have writers who uh, partner with me and we do that work and um and I think, you know, LinkedIn has just exploded. It's such a massive beast of a thing. And, you know, it was originally set up for executives, but now it's been set up for school uh, school students, um, even uh, university students and frontline roles. So it's not, you don't just have to be an executive to be on there. 
Um, from the research I've looked at lately is that um, the fastest growing demographic is, is university graduates and um, the most underrepresented group on LinkedIn is women. So if you're female and you're listening to this, I think that this would be one of the things that is a real opportunity for you is to, to get on there because it will really help you position and market yourself to connect with others. Um, so it's it's grown incredibly, 347 million people. It was developed in 2003, um, so it's starting to, to get its momentum, that's for sure. Uh, but the thing is, you know, when you the noise can be a little bit overwhelming if you're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn probably on most days, probably between 45 minutes to an hour maybe. I do a, a spend quite a bit of time on it um, because I go out and teach and I work with organisations on building their LinkedIn profiles for their staff, particularly sales teams, executive teams, or... Um, or helping the marketing and communications team to set up their strategy on how we're going to build this thing um, and how do we get this to work for our business. Because the key thing is that people buy from people. And, uh, you know, the, the way that businesses sell nowadays is a lot of them are still in the old traditional ways of doing things. They haven't tapped into the, the social networks that their staff have. And it, I think it's purely because they don't know how to do it. Um and some of the things that their fear is, is, you know, they don't want people to leave and that kind of thing. But if you're a solopreneur, micropreneur, you mm -hmm. are brand you. You are what makes it stand out. You are what makes it people want to connect with you and like you. And, you know, it's almost a tribe in itself. So me personally, um, I, yes, I have my blog and I have my newsletter and things like that. But LinkedIn has been probably um, the biggest driver and the biggest tool that I've used um, for developing and growing my business and reaching out to people and seeing what I can do to help. Um, admittedly, LinkedIn is a big part of my business. Um, I'm in the middle of writing the book on uh, LinkedIn for business development. So I'm hoping that will be out in the, before the end of the year. So, um, uh, but I think one of the things that there's just, uh, you know, one of the things I see that people, particularly solopreneurs, micropreneurs, a bit scared of um, putting a lot of self-serving type content up there. And I would totally agree. You know, a lot of people will put content up that's about them and it's not it's got to be about your audience and what you're doing to help them or the other thing i see is that people um have a profile but they don't know what to write in it so it's completely empty and they're scared of what they write or what what if somebody doesn't like what i have to say or or they haven't again this is coming back to a selfish mindset and we have to come back to an abundance mindset of i'm here to help people i have to articulate what it is that i do to help them and make it easy for them to work with me so, but one of the first things I find is you really got to think about who's reading it. You only have, I, in my book, in uh, the book Impact, How to Build Your Personal Brand for the Connection Economy, I talk about, and it's on, available on the website, uh, www.jane-anderson.com.au backslash books. You'll see my books there. And this one's Impact. It's my recent book. And I talk about... Um, uh, the first four seconds <laughs> and uh, you'll see blogs and things on my first four seconds but it's one of the rules that I have when I work with clients in that when we're looking at your digital presence particularly LinkedIn we only have four seconds for somebody to decide whether they like you or not and whether they're interested in knowing more so when I ask people well, how long do you think someone's on your profile for some will say 29 seconds or 35 seconds or 15 seconds it's only four. And so we've, we've got to capture that person's attention really quickly, combine that with search engine optimization, and then we've got a bit of an art that we're trying to, to pull off. So I think one of the things that some people also will come from is I don't care what's on my profile. I don't care what people think. I'm just going to put anything up there. I don't see it all the time, but I see it in the odd person. And I think Brene Brown um, the TED speaker, expert in vulnerability, she said, when you stop caring what people think, you lose your capacity for connection. And I totally agree. I think one of the one of the areas I really hone in on with clients is about connection. And I think if you can, your job as a, a solopreneur, particularly under brand you, is what you're trying, trying to do is show that I understand your challenges. I am here to help. I have a good knowledge of it. 
and um, this is what I can do to help you out of that frustration or pain. And to do that, you've got to care about what people are reading on your profile because LinkedIn is all about connection. And I think uh, one of the uh, other leaders, global leaders in personal branding, William Aruda, is the developer of Reach360 and, uh, and, uh, or the Reach program. And he says, you know, we're in this age of, the, of digital first. We often come across someone online before we meet them face to face. And so you could be missing an opportunity when you're trying to um, influence and persuade when you meet someone face to face if your LinkedIn profile's not right. So, for example, I remember um, back in about 2009 when I first started to really see the effects and impact of a, a good LinkedIn profile. Um, I'd written my, I'd done my profile. I'd been writing them for clients, and I had my own. And I was asked if I would come in and have a chat to a client about a particular program they're looking at running. And when I got to the meeting, the meeting was purely about how do I run the program and can you do these dates? So what I noticed way back then was that these people have already decided they want to work with me. Here I was, I'd done so much to prepare for this meeting. I thought I'm going to have to do a presentation. I'm going to have to walk them through how I go about it. Who else knows what God, what they've got in mind, you know? But what I realised when I got there is they want to make decisions quickly, and now we know that sixty percent of people will make a buying decision, or sixty percent. Sorry, I should say sixty percent of a buying decision is made before somebody gets in contact with you. So we want to make it really easy to, for them to feel like, oh yeah, I like this person, I like you. You you seem to know what you're doing. So um, so your profile in that digital first space that we're in now is it will either attract or repel um, a person long before they've even had a chance to meet you. And so I, I thought today in the podcast, what I wanted to do is run through what I think I've, I've got 13 questions that I reckon your profile really needs to nail. And if it's written well, it should answer these questions. So the first one is why should I care? <laughs> and why should I care? Why should I care is how is it that what you do makes a difference? How does it solve something? What is this problem that you're fixing? And that will tell me why I should care. Because, you know, did you know that um, uh, 70% of organisations have said in this particular research have said that they wish they had better leadership or you know, wow okay that's a pretty good reason why I should care or did you know that you know if I'm a coach and I land on someone's profile and they're saying you know I'm a, uh, did you know that you know 75% of coaches out there um, um, are hired be for confidence which is true I think that was in the ICF report in 2013 so oh right okay so I should care about that so um number one is why should I care number two is can I see me in you and when I say that there are a few things so some of the things that are like that are your your uh, picture or your your pro profile photo so people see your profile it's a bit like a mirror and when they're looking at your profile, they're looking to see themselves. And so that's as in, do you look like the type of person I hang out with or that I would connect with? Do you look a bit like me? Do you look like the people who I hang out with? Um, the other thing too is your content. So the problems, have you written about the problems? Have you written about the what your client is probably looking for so i'm look as i'm looking for through your profile if i'm a potential customer i'm looking for where is my problem in your profile so it's number two can i see me in you now, the third one is uh what makes you different now what makes you different this is about differentiation and it's all supports positioning if you haven't listened to the positioning podcast uh, it's one of my earlier ones you might want to download it um, but this one is about how what makes you different what is it that you do differently is it that you've worked with particular caliber of clients is it that you've um uh certain industries or is it 
even your message. So what is it that differentiates you? Do you work, you know, at certain, when people, you know, maybe you coach CEOs who have companies of, you know, $250 million plus or whatever it might be. So what makes you different? Number four is how will you, how will what you do benefit me? So in other words, you might say I'm an expert in environmental engineering or something like that. So, um, so how I help people, how I support you, is that I reduce, you know, emissions from your organisation by twenty five percent. I do, you know, so that you can be a, a, a social, uh, you know, environmentally responsible organisation, you know, blah blah blah, or something like that. So it needs to articulate how is it what that what you will do benefit me. Um, number five is do you understand my world? And this is about the problems. This is about clearly articulating the problems that your potential client or customer has. Um, because uh, if you if you don't show that you understand their world and it's all about you, then and it's got lots of me, me, I in it then um, you're not going to understand my world. So I get the feeling that you're not going to listen to me. So number five is, do you understand my world? Number six is, who have you worked with that I know? Now, this one, I sometimes call this brand leverage because with this one, not everybody knows you. Not everyone understands who you are or what you do. But what they do know or they do understand is if you have worked with an organization that they are already familiar with, particularly if they're, you know, Mm. a really big, big brand or a big name. So you might have something on there like um, some of the clients I've worked with, you know, Virgin, Rio Tinto, you know, uh, some of those types of organizations. So I Mm. might not know you, but I know those companies and I trust those companies. They're well established. I understand their brand. I understand their positioning. So it's almost like a brand association. Mm-hmm. Who have you worked with that I know? That will give me trust. Um, the second, the next one, number seven, what do people say about you? So you might notice on your LinkedIn profile that at the bottom of it are your recommendations. And this area is where I get to see you through somebody else's eyes. So what do people say about you? So if I went down to your recommendations area... Um, there may even be some that you've pulled out and put them up in the summary area. But of those people who have written something about you, I'm seeing you through someone else's lens as opposed to, or someone else's eyes, as opposed to I'm seeing you through your eyes. So it it helps me to get to know you a bit better. Um, uh, research has shown that for recruiters, and hiring managers they will generally if they like your personality 50 percent of the time they'll extend the offer now whilst we might be saying here we're not recruiting but i think the same thing happens for micropreneurs and solopreneurs because Mm. i i notice the same uh challenges pop up for them in their marketing and i reckon if you can get that personality to come through on as many angles as possible then you're more likely to connect So what do people say about you is number seven. Number eight is how effective have you been? What are the results that you've been able to achieve? So in this particular program, this organization or this this client said this. So what, um, how effective have you been? How do you know you've got a result? You know, did you, have you got a testimonial on there? Have you, how do you know? Um, Number nine is who has said that you're any good? (laughs) And so this is certainly around your recommendations, but there might be testimonials that you've had on your website or somewhere else that you've gone, you know what, I'm going to plug that in because that captures who has said that you're any good. So maybe you have um, a client that you've worked with or something like that, because if I can look at who said you're any good, I'm looking, if I'm looking at your profile, if I'm going, okay, I'm a, um, let's say I'm a, uh, I need a graphic designer and I'm on your graphic design website or I'm on your graphic, your LinkedIn profile and you're a graphic designer and I need a graphic designer and I'm a coach. 
So I'm going to be looking through your profile. If I see that a coach, so I go Mary Smith, executive coach, Sydney, I'm going to go, oh, well, this person understands what a coach is after. So, um, uh, so what that's going to tell me is who said you're any good? Well, there's another coach out there. So my suggestion to you is if you have, if you're looking to work with a certain industry, just make sure that those people who have said that you're any good are in that industry <laughs> get those just get their comments um, because the person looking at your profile which reflects back to number two is can I see me in you um, number 10 is what's your perspective and what's your perspective will support the ability for the person to understand or connect with your personality so this one what's your perspective what your perspective will come from your posts um, which are the great thing about LinkedIn is that you can put them up and they're permanent. So they don't just come through your feed like they do in a normal update. You can put these things permanently on your LinkedIn page, which is fantastic. It's even better than Facebook. So it means that if I'm thinking about working with you, I go on your profile and go, oh, okay, this HR consultant, he's written some stuff about performance management. He's written some stuff about leadership and I'll have a bit of a read of what he's written in his posts or his articles and his posts and his blogs that are on there. And I go, oh yeah, he kind of thinks like us. I think we, I think we could work together. I, I like that he said that because that's exactly the challenge we're having. So what's your perspective? Look for ways that you can get your perspective on there and the best ways to do that three posts. Um, number 11 is how do I work with you? So one of the things that I find is missing and it's a really basic type um, activity to have on your LinkedIn is how, uh, how do I work with you? So if you'd like to work with me, here's my phone number. Um, you know, here's my website, just simple stuff. Um, if you'd like to work with me, I, I run coaching programs, you know, they they run over six sessions and they do this. So, um, or if you'd like to work with me, um, I, here are some of the things that I can do. I do, if you're a graphic designer, I do logo design, I do, um, you know, stationery, I do blah, blah, blah. So how can I, how do I work with you? So we work face to face, you know, I can come and visit you, um, whatever it is, you just make it really easy for people to understand how they come to work with you. Don't be too over the top and too creative. Just make it practical and straightforward and let them connect. Um, number 12 is where can I find more information? Um, make sure you have your phone number on there, your website, your email address. Um, just bear in mind that when you're on your LinkedIn profile and on your page, in the contact us area, you'll see where it drops down and it sits under your photo and under the title. Now, most a lot of people don't realize that that's where you go to find your contact information. So, um, just make sure you have it loud and clear up in your summary area. Um, it will use up a few character spaces, but it's well worth it. Um, even use the plugins, plug in for your website, um, use all those other ones like your, vi your video blogs if you've got those or anything like that. But be easy to contact. <laughs> um, and number 13 is. Um, are you a fake account? <laughs> I know this sounds, uh, it's often a lens that people are seeing things through. I know I certainly do it because I get a approached by a lot of fake accounts. Um, I've had accounts set up with my taking my photo, which is why I have a watermark on my photo. Um, LinkedIn are fantastic, by the way, of if you've got someone who's taken your profile photo or you've got concerns, they do get onto it very quickly and, um, and they remove them. But are you a fake account? The things that will make your profile look fake and will prevent people from connecting with you is if you, um, uh, if you don't have um, an employment history on there, if you don't have recommendations, um, if you... Um, what else we'll have on there? Um, if you haven't got skills and endorsements and you're not being endorsed for certain skills, that will certainly um, uh, make people think it's a bit odd. Um, particularly if you have 500 connections and none of them have endorsed you for anything, that looks like a fake account because it looks like it's been set up straight away mm -hmm. and then this massive sort of um, connect 
fest <laughs> out with all these people. So I think you want to just be mindful that, um, you know, your profile can look fake and without realizing it. And some people can be suspicious. So make sure it's got as much information on there as you can. Um, and even if it's your posts and things like that, because it will help people to realize that they can trust and connect with you. And uh, so I think if you can do that, th with those questions, I think you'll find that uh, you'll get your first four seconds up. It will help people um, be excited about connecting with you, find you interesting. And, uh, and then it won't be a complete waste of time on your social media and your LinkedIn should start to work for you. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, I hope today's podcast has been helpful. Um, just to um, share with you, as I said, the Corporation New Program will be coming up soon. That's coming up um, in July, so that will be available on the website. Um, but you might like to, uh, in the interim, um, I've just completed the book, which is the impact, which is called Impact: How to Build Your Personal Brand for the Connection Economy, and it is. Uh, on the website as well if you go to the books area uh, coming up soon there will be a link there to download the uh, kindle version hopefully but we have uh, the paper-based version right now so that can get out to you in the next few days if you would like to order it everything i'm talking about is in the book and in even more detail so um have a fantastic rest of your day i hope today's been really helpful all right we'll see you next time